don't like dahlias because they attract earwigs, and earwigs are my worst oh, nightmare. Enemy, huh? <laughs> Morning, Kay. Good morning. Um, Cisco and I know how to get rid of earwigs. You can oh, I know, but I just don't want to even try to get rid of earwigs. <laughs> well, they trap easily. <laughs> All right. Nice pictures of your trip, Rich. Oh, I didn't see your ferry before. ride. Oh, were they on? Uh, they're on Facebook. Facebook, aren't they? Are they on Facebook? I think they're on Facebook. Oh, you're muted, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a really nice trip. Uh, yeah. I think it's so open until like the twelfth of uh, August on Mondays and Thursdays. To oh, point okay. Robert? And we did the afternoon one. It I think it goes from uh, three three o'clock to pick it up in Bellingham, and that comes back at five thirty from Point Roberts. Yeah. Well, you've got a really nice picture of your beautiful wife. <laughs> oh. I had a comment from somebody who says, "Who's this mermaid you picked up with her?" <laughs> 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 thinking of trying to take that trip too. Uh, no, I'm just going to read it though. I mean, no, you don't read it. No, no, look at it um, while he's reading. Mm -hmm. Hey, Trish. <laughs> hey, Rich. Yes. Uh, don't you get equal time? I think like you should have another another pennant on the wall there be underneath that other one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> not not in her studio. I <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we, we had a friend uh, in Vancouver, <clears throat> a husky, and she actually made a quilt of Husky Stadium. Mm. Oh, on really? the back of it, she put the cougar emblems. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hi, Katie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone doing today? Good. Right? Good. Good. Good morning, Pastor Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey Howard, you gonna go to church today? <laughs> Come here. Come here. <laughs> yes. See, Howard. Howard's going to church today. Oh, uh, Abby, Abby, Abby's <laughs> here. <so> excited. <laughs> Abby's oh, here too. Nine, so Nineteen and a half years old. Oh, wow. Gosh. Wow. Yes. My cat's hiding under the bed where she's been all all the time since my daughter came. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else in the house? She just hides all the time. So. Our dog, dog is here this morning too. So. Your dog? Our dog? Yeah, Abby is here. Yeah. Oh. I don't know where Jasper is. Our one cat. He's pretty much has perfect attend church attendance. Oh, white he's tail. not here yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loves Zoom meetings for some reason. Every time, same we have a meeting, he should, he's he's hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Does he like to watch the cat shows on TV? <laughs> uh, yeah, we haven't, he hasn't really done that. Yeah, we haven't really done that too much. We should try that. Well, maybe you had the, uh, my cat from hell on. <laughs> that scared him. Uh -huh. good, morning. good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Peggy, I could just see the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. Now I see your nose. <laughs> You're getting closer. Just a little more. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody Fresh, doing? Fresh. We're fine. Hi. How are you? Hey, hey Trish, my son sent a, a 
a video or a picture of them playing rummy cube and they don't know how to play it right <laughs> so i'll have to teach them your way of playing it oh good <laughs> they just line up the same numbers or you know they don't well that's the way they do it play. online oh okay well maybe that's what they learned Yeah, Laura. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Good <laughs> morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's almost time to start. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to see if I can get us on to uh, Facebook here. <laughs> it's recording. No, it's, it's hanging behind her. Oh. She shows. Did you bring some of those to share? No, oh, I can make a good little walker. Morning. Morning, Bob. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Morning, Bob and Linda. Morning. Good to see everybody. <laughs> Morning, Morning Linda. Facebook. Morning, Bob. <laughs> Where's your other half? He's over there reading his phone. He's going to come. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am well, thank you. Good. Have you. Dan, the uh, electrician. Have you, <laughs> yeah, reluctant electrician. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's become that way. I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never outlive it, Dan. <laughs> Once electrician, always electric. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I Hi, Annie. I have to bear, huh? Yeah. Good morning, Pastor Joel. Morning. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> oh, Roger there. I think I saw well, let's see yeah. if I got it going now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I've got it going now. All this modern technology. Oh, there he is. There he is. He's through with his phone now. Actually, I was doing my bills. Oh, well, it's your phone. You want a few extra? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Hi, Stephanie and Diane, Ella. <laughs> Figure out how to send this video. <laughs> oh, we're already on Facebook. Hmm. Who else is uh... I'm Veronica. Your ceiling light is shining in our eyes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try this again because somehow it yeah. got sent to my <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> So tough being Veronica. I mean being Rebecca. Tough being Veronica. But tough being Rebecca isn't it best? I'm rich. 
Morning, Kathleen. Where are you headed? <laughs> Kathleen? Uh, Hi, Cindy. Hello. How are you? <laughs> good, good. How are you? We're hanging in there. <laughs> good. Kathleen looks like she's driving in her car, so I was curious. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> okay, I think we're now ready. Time to, for us to mute ourselves, huh? Yep, everybody needs to mute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're now live on the correct Facebook page. I'm getting a nod from some people. Okay, great. So Roger, would you like to start us off with a prelude? Thank you, Roger. And uh, now we will uh, go to announcements, which I'm not sure if we have 
mini today, but I wanted to let you know that uh, Rebecca is going to be out of the office for the week, but you can always reach me by either the office phone, my cell phone, or by email. So if anybody needs to get a hold of me. And you'll want to look at the e-news because next week's bulletin was in this week's e-news as well. And the Zoom link will be the same. And of course, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you'll see us there also. Let's see. Oh, and also in the e-news, um, well, Stephanie will have a mission moment a little later, but there's information and the poster regarding the book sale that's going to be happening at the end of the month. Okay. Plus there's also good stuff about what the trustees have been doing. So let us gather ourselves together. And if you have a candle that you'd like to light, this is a good time to do that too. Or you could wait until the passing of the piece. Um, so let's gather together. Let us begin by humbling acknowledging that we gather today on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascades watersheds since time immemorial. But with heavy hearts, let's also acknowledge the harms the church has placed on our indigenous siblings. Let us join in expressing our heartfelt repentance for the harms done in our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, especially the Lemmy Nation and the Nooksack tribe who have continued to care for and protect our sacred lands and waterways. And if you live in another part of the US or in another country, I invite you to first find out who lived in your land you are living on and whose backbreaking labor built it into the community you know it of as today. May we each commit to working alongside our neighbors to protect Mother Earth and in so doing honor one another. So let's center ourselves in silence and breathe deeply as we prepare to worship the beauty and the goodness of the divine. And let us remember that no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Amen. Amen. Veronica? Good morning, everyone. This first song is I Come With Joy. So let's come with joy today to, to worship our God.
Opening prayer. God of our hopes and dreams, we are empty and we long to be filled. We are hungry and long to be fed. We are lost and we long to be found. Invite us once to eat our fill and find our true nourishment in Jesus, the heaven, the bread of heaven. Just as Jesus gathered us up from the fragments of the five loaves and the two fish after feeding the 5,000, gather up the pieces of our lives and shelter us in your love. Amen. Passing the peace of Christ, lighting the peace candle. In response to the love we have found in Christ, a love that passes all understanding, let us share signs of God's, of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. And, and also with you. you. As we move into our time of uh, prayers with the, or time with the kids, Marta reminds me that we are also collecting backpacks. We'll be co collecting backpacks for kids in August for schools. So if that's something you wanna be looking for as perhaps they go on sale or as you're cleaning out your closets or what have you, um, now's a good time also. So kids, um, I have some things here and I'm curious if you recognize them. I brought them with me. Recognize this? They come in different colors, but it's a can. Uh. It's a can of stuff. Do you recognize it? Um, so I grew up, it's, I hope mom and dad aren't watching because this was kind of gross, but um, <laughs> they, mom would put butter on a piece of bread and then put the tuna fish on it and then put another butter on the other piece of bread and then put tuna fish butter. to get it. Butter, yeah, we had butter on both sides of the bread. I would rather it was just tuna fish, but that's how we had it. And then maybe you recognize, do you ever eat these? Yeah, Karen. Oh, hey, right. yeah. Some kippers, do you ever eat kippers? Um, yep, my grandpa apparently when he went hunting would take a can of kippers and a Hershey bar and a Coke. And I always kind of wondered how in the world did you get anything? I mean, wouldn't they smell those fish from miles away? <laughs> but anyway, and this is a certain kind of bread. And I don't know if you kids have had kind of cracker bread like this. Have you ever had cracker bread kind of like this? No, it's kind of full of just grain, mainly. Um, I think it's a Northern European sort of thing, but having family that's Northern European, that's what we ate a lot with these things or maybe pickled herring. But I did learn something yesterday, as a matter of fact, that I didn't know. Do you know before canned tuna fish, what they were canning? Salmon. Now I knew they canned salmon because they had a lot of canneries up in this area of the world where they were canning salmon, but I didn't know that it wasn't until the salmon were starting to struggle to get enough salmon to can that we moved into tuna fish. I thought we had been canning tuna fish all along. Now you may be wondering, well, Joel, what are you doing with this canned fish and this bread stuff? But today's gospel lesson is about a time in which Jesus gathers with a very large crowd of people and asks the disciples, well, why don't you feed him? And the disciples say, well, how are we supposed to feed him? I mean, it would be like 2,000 2, days of labor worth of cost to even give him bread. And then Andrew, one of the disciples comes up and says, well, there's this kid here and he's got two fish and he's got five barley loaves, not even wheat loaves. He's just got five barley loaves. Um, so I don't know if that was said out of desperation or out of hope, but Jesus turns those two fish and those five 
barley loaves into enough food to feed everybody. And there's enough that there's 12 basketfuls at the end. So never underestimate what you kids can do in the sense of with your faithfulness, just by showing up and offering what you have, even if it's not canned tuna or sardines or kippers. Okay. So anyway, just thought I would share that kind of story with you. And next time you have a tuna fish sandwich, or maybe you try out one of these kind of crackers or something, um, you can be mindful of the ways that God's at work in the world. Let's say a prayer. Gracious one, we give you thanks for the ways in which you're at work in the world around us, especially for the faith of children and the ways that they can help remind us of your presence. And as they come forth with faith, remind us of how we, the rest of us, can respond to you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us sing to the children. May the love of God fill you from your head, your head down to your, your toes. toes. May, May it wiggle, wiggle through, through your fingers. fingers. Dance upon your nose. May the people all around you help you live so loving grows. May the love of God fill you up until it overflows. Okay. As we move into our time of, of uh, prayers of the people, I'm going to be trying to watch both chats here if you want to lift up something that way. Um, let us pray. Oh, gracious one, we give you thanks for another chance to gather together. As we're reminded that though we might be scattered upon the fields of the earth or cast upon the waters, you gather us together. You gather us together like 12 basketfuls of food that's left over, that we too might be a blessing for the larger world. We especially pray today for those who are facing COVID sorts of health issues. Remembering especially a friend of ours who's, though fully vaccinated, has caught COVID. We also remember Lou Pritchard, who has been the chancellor for the United Methodist Conference for years before retiring as he was fully vaccinated also and caught COVID and has been hospitalized. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for those who are in the midst of struggling with mental health issues or are struggling with um, loss of home insecurity, remembering especially Ted, but also Roger who's come through. May we as a society work on better ways in which we can care for our own people that we might see everybody as created in your image. But in the meantime, may we find ways in which we can reach out in tangible ways to help those who come to us seeking assistance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for whom else do we pray? I'd like to pray for um, the children next that live next door, 
uh, a three-year-old and a five-year-old have come down with COVID and, um, and their dad is on their way. He's there on vacation on the other side of the country and their dad is uh, flying out tonight to be with them. Oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for the family of Max Bukanupin. Max died Friday. Hmm. He was a good friend. Well, gracious one, we ask for your comfort for the family as they struggle with what it means to grieve. May they see you and be reminded of the ways their family members have been touched in the larger community support. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Praying for people who are suffering from natural disaster. I don't know how natural they are, but disasters, floods, hurricanes, not tomatoes, tornadoes. Floods, especially. Floods, yeah. Around the world, losing their homes. The Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we have great prayers of thanksgiving, too, for a new niece, Claire, who was born on Friday night. The Lord, in your great love, hear our prayers. Lord, we gather together and we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your reign come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yours is to reign the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Uh, before we go to the prayer, um, let's see here if we can get, did we get all the kids into a a breakout room. Veronica, I see you're still with us. Okay, I think we did it. Are there any other kids who we didn't get into a breakout room? All right, we're trying to learn all this stuff. Okay, let me... Libby, you're muted. Thank you. Opening prayer. God of our hopes and dreams, we are empty and long to be filled. We are hungry and long to be fed. We are lost and long to be found. Invite us once more to eat our fill and find our true nourishment in Jesus and the bread of heaven. Just as Jesus gathered up the fragments of the five loaves and the two fish after feeding the 5,000, gather up the pieces of our lives and shelter us in your love. Amen. Did that, okay. Oh my goodness, so children. Prayer of illumination. I'm sorry about that. 
extravagant God as followers of the way, we gather this day to celebrate your love in a world and in our lives. We gather this day to rejoice with our worshiping community, the endless possibilities your dream for us. We gather this day to experience something new in your stories. We gather this day to simply be with you. Open our senses, loving God, so that we may experience your extravagantly and know you more deeply. Amen. We listen for the holy, holy scripture, John 6, 1 through 21, bread and fish for all. After this, Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee, some call it Tiberias. A huge crowd followed him, attracted by the miracles they had seen him do among the sick. When they got to the other side, he climbed a hill and sat down, surrounded by his disciples. It was nearly time for the peace of Passover, kept annually by the Jews. When Jesus looked out and saw the large crowd had arrived, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread to feed these people? He said this to stretch Philip's faith. We already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 silver pieces wouldn't be enough to buy bread for each person to get a piece. One of the disciples, it was Andrew, brother to Peter Simon, said, there's a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But that's a drop in the bucket for a crowd like this. Jesus said, make the people sit down. There was a nice carpet of green grass in this place. They sat down, about 5,000 of them. And Jesus, then Jesus took the bread and having given thanks, gave it to those who were seated. He did the same with the fish. All ate as they wanted. When the people had eaten their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the leftovers so nothing is wasted. They went to work and filled 12 large baskets with leftovers from the five barley loaves. The people realized that God was at work among them in what Jesus had done. They said, this is the prophet for sure. God's prophets right here in Galilee. Jesus saw that in their enthusiasm, they were about to grab him and make him king. So he slipped off and went back to the mountain to be by himself. In the evening, his disciples went down to the sea, got in the boat and headed back across the water in Capernaum. It had a great, it had grown quick dark and Jesus had not yet returned. A huge wind blew up, churning the sea. There were maybe three or four miles out of what Jesus, when they saw Jesus walking on the sea, quite near the boat. They were scared senseless, senseless but he reassured them, it's me, it's all right, don't be afraid. So they took him on board. In no time, they reached land, that exact spot where they were headed to. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. So <clears throat> earlier on in the chat um, here on Zoom, somebody, I won't mention who, asked if anybody would like some zucchini, which had me kind of cracking up because I don't think the person knew I was going to share this story. Now, in sharing the story, I want you to know I'm not giving anybody any ideas, but it is rather humorous. When we were in Garfield, most people in town didn't lock their cars. It was a town about 600. Most people didn't lock their houses. In fact, I never did have a key to the house that we were living in. I knew where one was out in the garage in a secret location if I were to get locked out. But if you locked your house, you didn't get things like fresh eggs or vegetables. 
So the only time anybody locked their houses and especially their cars was during zucchini season. One day, <laughs> one Sunday, we entered the church and nobody had any zucchini in their car. We came out of church everybody had a sack of zucchini in their car. It was about three years later before somebody finally fessed up that they had brought the zucchini and they purposely left a bag in their own car so they wouldn't be blamed. Yeah, I see a lot of laughter. Do we, dare we live and see ourselves living in this sense of abundance. If we see ourselves living in a sense of abundance, it's zucchini season that seems to be the place where we're really reminded about abundance. But in some ways that has to deal with uh, the story today too. So if you, were to look at the bulletin cover, you might see this image, but I'm also just going to pull it up because I happen to have it here. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. So you might notice that there's a basket here in the middle and that there's a fish on each side and that there are four loaves. Now, I take it that um, this is some artistic uh, freedom and that, of course, there would be another loaf of bread underneath these four so you wouldn't see it. It's interesting that um, there have found, archaeologists have now found another uh, image very similar to this, but that one has five. So you might kind of wonder, well, which perhaps was the oldest one. Okay. Now, apparently that um, image comes from, let's pull up another little share screen here from the Sea of Galilee map. That image comes from a little place here, Tabakatha. And there was um, a monastery here and a church with that image underneath it. That church was destroyed by at least 670, um, but it was only kind of, and people, historians knew it was there, but it was only recently excavated in the 20th century and they found that image. But I wanted to, show that, see, that's a little bit farther away. You could come from C, from Capernaum, around. And John's gospel, though, has people kind of here from Tiberias. And Tiberias was one of, it was a large city that um, Herod Antipas, who was the kind of puppet king ruler of Galilee, built to honor Tiberius, one of the Caesars. So he was trying to do honor, maybe reach a little bit more prestige. It had a problem though. It was built over a necropolis, so a graveyard, which meant it was unclean for anybody following the Torah to live there. It didn't stop some of the wealthy. It's near the sea. It's got maybe some opportunities for wealth. It's on a trade route, kind of the silk route going back and forth. But when you're poor, in some ways, you've got a decision to make. Are you going to follow the Torah or are you going to follow economic uh, opportunity? And a bunch of folks followed economic opportunity and they ended up going there. So when Jesus suddenly shows up in John's gospel, there at Tiberius, or just outside, it really is 
this community of poor, Torah unclean individuals who are coming out to meet him. And of course, then we have this exchange with Jesus and Philip, knowing what's going to happen, or Jesus apparently knows what's going to happen. And you might say, all right, so you're testing Philip from a sort of uh, pedagogical, a teacher sort of methodology so that you would know what is coming. You think Philip is probably going to say this, and then you can teach the whole disciples, you know, a good lesson. It's going to sink home. And then, of course, Andrew comes out and mentions, here's this kid with two fish, and he's got five barley loaves. Not wheat loaves, but barley loaves. So poor quality in that time. I tend to like barley. It's fine. But um, maybe I shouldn't say that having moved from the Palouse at some point where wheat is the king crop. But so this is kind of poor food, but it gets distributed to everyone. There's immediate references to the sense that the Romans, to keep people comfortable, used to distribute wheat. You've probably heard of bread and circus. So if you keep people fed and entertained, then they tend to be kind of milder, don't cause so much trouble. But what's interesting is that Jesus invites them to sit down, to actually recline as if they were at a meal. Jesus provides a meal rather than just food. Jesus ends up providing a meal rather than just food. And in the course of a meal, of course, is inviting people kind of to come together and get to know one another better. There's another interesting thing happening, which we might skip over, but it's near Passover. The crowd has gathered there instead of going down for the Passover celebrations in Jerusalem. They haven't gone. Also, eating fish and bread would have been somewhat of an anti-temple thing to do because fish were never blessed and were never part of the temple ritual. So it, there's an anti-temple thing that's kind of happening as well. So the people have gathered. They've been invited to this meal. Of course, it's near Passover, which is bringing up images of Moses and Moses leading people out into the desert and the people out in the desert being given manna. And here Jesus has just provided them with bread and fish. See some connections kind of happening? This actually is one of the few places in which a crowd of people in John's gospel is described with a male pronoun. So there's something going on here when talking about 5,000 men who have gathered. It's talking and making it equivalent to some sort of an army. There's a militariness that might be somewhat happening. And Jesus, sensing this, disappears. Now, it's interesting because we're going to be talking in somewhat about this meal for quite a few weeks. Um, next week, there's a talk about, well, what does this mean? And Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. And we follow that out as to what that implication means over time. But there's another little story here that I think is equally important and provides an interesting um, commentary too. Jesus disappears 
up the mountain. It's becoming evening. The disciples get restless, or maybe Jesus told them, if I'm not back by dusk, then depart without me. But they end up leaving at dusk. Then it doesn't become night. It becomes dark. And the seas become chaotic. And they're in the boat wondering what to do. I'm not sure how many of us remember that a boat, a ship is often seen as an old sign for the church. And of course, in John's gospel, darkness carries on a certain um, ill light. Just have a slight pun um, to the whole thing. And then they see Jesus walking across the water, and they're afraid. And Jesus says, I am. I am. It's me. You don't need to be afraid. There's interesting, another interesting thing that's happening through all of this is the sense of becoming. And Jesus says, I am. They they then are willing to accept him into the boat, they say. The sea's calm. They're immediately where they need to be. They're there. I think that though the whole bread and what does it mean to live in abundance and what does it mean to share meals with one another is so important, but so is the sense of being perhaps in this ship that has been tossed and turned, especially over the last year and a half, since November of 2019, when we've struggled with what does COVID mean? And um, how at first we kind of saw it, shall we say, coming closer and closer and closer to Whatcom County. And that brought some anxiety until it was suddenly here and we shut things down. And perhaps we too feel like we have been in this ship that has been tossed and turned on a chaotic sort of sea. And yet, do we recognize, do we see that Jesus too is with us, is here? Do we see the ways in which we too, out of our own sense of abundance, have been able to care for people? With whether it's the blessing boxes, whether it's caring for somebody who came through and was struggling with what to do with themselves while on the church property, whether it's been the ways in which we can through our working on the building, prepare for being in ministry once we start to reopen again? And can we see and experience the living Christ who's present with us? Especially every time we stop to share a meal with one another. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joel. This next hymn is Pues Vivimos, or In All Our Living.
Thank you, Veronica. Are you ready? Hello, everybody. I'm here to pre pre present our minute for mission about the book drive coming up. We are collecting books, all kinds of books, new and gently used books to help the Interfaith Coalition in their learning center and in their kids need books. Um, and this is coming up next Saturday from 10 to two in the church parking lot. There will be people there to collect your books and you can just drive through and drop them off. And we're especially looking for books that are um, perhaps more modern in their outlook, things that, that um, focus on maybe diversity or gender equality, blended families, things dealing with climate change or COVID issues, things that uh, are not the old classics and sometimes have improper uh, uh, examples and things. So uh, there's a poster in the e-news and I think, um, was Joel gonna put that up on the screen for you? Can you find it? <laughs> that gives a lot of examples of the kinds of books that they're looking for. And all the way from toddlers and infants, all the way up through um, uh, early fifth grade um, and um, books in other languages as well, English, Spanish, uh, English, Russian, um, things with Native American themes. And so, See what you can find. I've found a lot of um, inexpensive books actually through Deadlist and some other things or go to the um, Goodwill or Value Village place and find some books there that are uh, in good condition. So um, we'll see you on Saturday between 10 and 2. Come and bring as many books as you can. Thank you. invitation to share our blessings. As we have been loved, so may we love others. As we have been fed, so may we feed others. As we have received from God's hand blessings beyond measure, may we also generously share one another and with God's world. As you prepare your offering, please say a prayer for the mission and ministry of this church. You can send your offering to the church at P.O. Box 186, Ferndale, Washington, 98248, or visit our home webpage at ucfl.org, or look for the donation option, or ask the bank about an automatic deposit. Prayer of Dedication. Ever giving God, you lavish us with great abundance, grace, comfort, and eternal life and priceless gifts. Empower us to herald that truth in word and action. May these offerings be a small part of our commitment to the way of extravagant sharing. Bless all those, bless all they represent as you sanctify us in your love. Amen. Thank you, ladies. And now for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power of bliss. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. For the closing hymn today is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less.
Thank you, Veronica. Here then the benediction. Seeing that the world really is full of abundance and having received some of that abundance yourself, go forth in peace as you love and serve the world. Amen. So before we go, I wanted to give a great shout out of thanks for our musicians this morning, Roger and Veronica. Thank you, Libby, for being one of the liturgists and for Stephanie for stepping up to do a missions moment. So for our Facebook Live folks, before you disappear, know that we love you and I wish everybody a great week.